Greetings in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining today. Now while share with you after testing my stream, I'll share with you all the errors of Yogananda as you're supposed to be knowing them. So I'm just checking the stream. Greetings in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So yes, I'm live on Facebook and also on and also on uh, LinkedIn. LinkedIn also. Yes, yes. I just switch on my yes. That's good. Yes, we I'll kickstart the classification of the errors of. I'll start the classification of the errors of Yogananda. So what is the classification? So the errors of Yogananda on all opponents of Christianity, those who are making claims that the Christian God does not exist, something, a big claim, or they're reinterpreting Christianity according to their philosophy. So all these people commit different types of errors. And that is what I call as classif classification of the errors of the opponents, maybe opposing philosophies, opposing religions. Whether they say they are opposing it or they say, no, it's, it's the same, okay? They may claim all these things, okay? But they are not the same. And we should know all their important errors in a classified way. But if you want to communicate what's wrong with that, you know, it's a very common question. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? You can say this is all wrong with this, okay? So what is wrong with Yogananda? What's wrong with him? What's wrong with that? So there are, uh, you know, a lot of types of errors. So we're going to classify them into number one, epistemological errors. So how did Yogananda know whatever he taught? So that is where, can he know what he is telling? Is it possible for humans to know all those things about reality? Okay, so that is number one, epistemological errors. Number two, community biases. Okay, so the human mind is has a lot of bias, you know, uh, cognitive biases as well as other biases. Uh, and these biases will distort the thinking and make them believe things they should not be believing. They will, it will make it acceptable to them. For example, this philosophy will be acceptable to Indians commonly. Okay, Yogananda's philosophy, a lot of Indian Hindus, even if they do not know what it is, they will accept it because they are biased. They have the identity that they are Hindus and whatever evidence they is given, they will accept it. Okay, they will not question it. Most of them, 
because they identify with Hinduism and they will identify with this philosophy, Hindu philosophy, also in most cases, okay, as a, a part of uh, being a Hindu. So that is bias, okay. So that is biased for, they are biased for Hinduism and they are biased against other religions, Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, uh, all, these, all these things they will be very biased against. Okay, they will immediately start questioning it. They will talk about what about this, what about this, what about this, you know, all these things. And that means they are biased against it. They, they may not know everything properly. They may know this and that. We have to clarify, okay, a lot of things to them because they do not know, but still they will be questioning it. It's good, okay? It's good they're questioning, but they will not question the Hindu philosophies. The same way because of bias. Okay, that's what I'm trying to tell. Of course, the same applies to a lot of Christians also. You know, uh, generally, they may accept a lot of, you know, Christian teachings, whereas if it is from other uh, religions, they may question it or just say, no, we don't believe this out of, uh, you know, just like that, without even knowing what is being said. So that is biased, uh, you know, thinking. And that is a, a lot of bias in Yogananda's position because, you know, yoga is a Indian, now India means yoga, okay? It's become identical with yoga. Yoga means India. So therefore, of many Indians, even I've seen a lot of Christians, mainly Catholics and all who are open to other systems, they will be even defending this philosophy, okay? They will be defending this philosophy because they are Indians, okay? And that is their tradition. They have some pride in it. They may not know it, okay, fully. They will tell, uh, they'll try to tell that it's good for health or something, something positive about it. So that is the uh, bias uh, which is seen among, because of the Indianness, okay? Uh, uh, and yoga. Okay, a lot of Indians are very proud that Westerners are doing yoga, even they may not be. <laughs> Most of the Indians may not be doing yoga, and you know, a lot of Westerners may be doing you know, yoga, but they will be feeling uh, proud about the fact that they are doing what was what is identified with Indian. So they are eating, you know, Punjabi, they are eating some Indian food. This this guy may not be having the money to <laughs> you know, the resources to have that type of, you know, uh, food, regional foods and uh, uh, food which are sold in hi-fi restaurants. But, you know, he'll be happy that, or his identity, based on his identity, that some foreigners, others are enjoying it. And he's enjoying the fact that they're enjoying it. You know, all these, all these are forms of bias. Okay, so next we'll move on to uh, what is called uh, Factual errors, so number one, epistemological errors, cognitive biases, next factual errors, next we move on to logical errors, okay, then faulty assumptions, number five, fifth type of error, and then sixth type of error is internal contradiction, seventh type of error is external contradiction, and uh, then we will refute specific claims of Yogananda. The eighth category of error is special, you know, errors, special to him, like, you know, uh, Kriya Yoga, uh, what he's famous for, and what are the errors with those things with respect to Christianity. Okay, so those things we will be refuting in this discussion. So the book, ebook, and print version of the book, Debunking Yogananda, a Christian critic by Advanced Apologetics Research is available on Kindle as well as on Google Books in Google Play Store. Okay, so you can, uh, now I think it's free and free sale is going on. So you can avail it for free for five days. After that, it will be, I think, a 9.99 USD or 4, uh, 49 
in in rupees oh so that's what we'll be looking into so this uh, along we have classified it you know eight types of errors so if there are eight types of errors in a system okay it, you can be sure you know you can bury it forever okay it cannot be resurrected to the truth seeker okay because these are based on tests of truth and we are going to use this framework of tests for truth where we have we're going to check for eight types of errors and uh, we can debunk this philosophy because of its claim a reasoning okay and uh, that you can know these things that is the important claim they're making that you can know it directly and if you do this certain uh, type of meditation as you meditate you will know you will have a experience and that is ultimate reality you are realized it something will happen in your head when you control your breath or you know you are uh, controlling your breath for a long period of time controlled breathing and all those things and when you do that uh, what happens is there will be some alteration in the brain and that is equated that experience of calmness of you know whatever happens in the brain is equated with the ultimate reality itself i don't see any connection there between ultimate reality and what is you are experiencing when you are meditating so that is a faulty assumption you know that is a logical fallacy it's a type of error so to start with let us start with uh, the scientific errors especially when it comes to his specific type of yoga which is called kriya yoga okay so what is kriya yoga so kriya yoga is a uh, type of yoga or a form of obtaining self realization or liberation so according to kriya yoga it is a path to salvation so what is salvation in hinduism it is not going to heaven okay it is not finding god it is not having a rebirth okay self realization that you are the ultimate reality that there is no distinction between this self and god okay so you are a manifestation of god and in that process you are going to transcend all your bad karmas with the, this birth itself or in a few births and then you will not have a rebirth that not having a rebirth is salvation or moksha because in hinduism why is someone born because of karmic debt someone is born and every birth is for just suffering not just like that suffering uh, suffering which is just justice based suffering or just suffering okay so because of his bad karma so the you know balance between good karma and bad karma the bad karma is more so that is called this you know there are bad karma is eight good karma is five so there is a karmic debt of three bad karmas for which the individual has to be born or reborn and suffer in this life so life is suffering okay you are born to suffer the purpose of life is to undergo 
punishment for the bad karma three points of bad karma okay so for that you have to undergo punishment and once that is done you will have equal number of good karma and bad karma okay because this is dealt with provided you don't accumulate your bad karma okay so in the new birth you are going to suffer you are suffered for three bad karmas but you may end up creating few more bad karmas maybe okay three more bad karmas let's say and what will happen so the karmic debt remains but if you make only two more bad karmas the karmic debt is reduced and you will have a, another birth but you may be able to reduce it to one or zero when it comes to karmic debt is paid off okay and the karmic debt is zero you will not have another rebirth and that is liberation from the cycle of karma and rebirth okay so karma is the cause for the rebirth and that is, if there is no karmic debt or bad karma in your account you will not have to be reborn to suffer because life itself is suffering just suffering okay not just in unjust suffering or unwanted suffering you are born to suffer because you need to suffer it's a punishment it's like a jail imprisonment so that is the view of life that is why you can see a lot of you know ascetic practices self flagellation walking you know walking all the way to you know thousands of their people will be walking uh, pilgrimage sites you can you can see that even catholicism but in hinduism they are walking to gain karma points and you know reduce the bad karma or increase the good karma and you know, uh, pay off the karmic debt so that is what they are trying to do okay so in this setup in this way of thinking if this is the problem then yogananda is giving you a solution from hindu texts it's already there okay so he is selecting a few and he is formulating his own uh, you know emphasis it's the same thing okay nothing new he is uh, formulating his uh, emphasis and is synthesizing from different schools and is he wants to promote it in the west okay that is his aim okay because india is already saturated and uh, you know questioners need to know because you know they need to they are also part of humanity and uh, universal uh, you know this is a universal problem all are having the same problem indians have the problem that's the same problem in the united states it's the same problem in europe okay so all of them are born to pay off their karmic debt and with all these assumptions okay all the gurus are setting a posture the whole hindu religion is based on these things even the caste system is based on these things based on karma points so bad karma outcast better than that karma lower caste worker caste then comes you know uh, better than that karma you get a business caste better than that karma you get the warrior caste and the top you get the priest caste with all the privileges intact as you come down the privilege decreases duty increases only duties okay no privileges as you come below and the outcasts are subhuman okay they done something terrible in their previous life maybe it is hitler who is born in the outcast and got raped gang raped by higher caste men and it will happen multiple times because he has killed a lot of people and for that to happen multiple times he has to be born a lot of times so that there goes the hindu caste system as well as you know caste discrimination just discrimination just punishment whatever happens whatever bad happens is just punishment okay so that is what we are up against that's what we are trying to expose and that's what believers christians need to know is not about some uh, getting you into some good mood or you know releasing your pressure <laughs> all this is so that you don't do end up doing bad karma that's the hindu point 
Why is he doing yoga, all these things, and upside down? He's calming himself down. Why is this lowering his stress level? Then you will not be doing bad things. If you're calm, you'll do good things. You'll be, you know, thoughtful. And you will reduce your bad karma, you increase your good karma. And then, yes, liberation. You will not have a rebirth. You don't want to come back to the hell hole of the earth. Okay, so that is the false religion of Hinduism and what I'm trying to expose. And uh, that has been deepened through the classific classification of the errors. So all the errors have been classified into eight types, as I already said. And I'll give you the link for the book. It's available for free. Download it and read it. Okay. So now we'll go to uh, Kriya Yoga. Okay. So Kriya Yoga emphasizes me meditation and yoga techniques. He said, it's a primary means of achieving spiritual goals. Okay. So spiritual goal is self-realization and after you realize the cells your bad karma are dealt with and all your good karmas will increase and you will not have a rebirth that's the important thing once you have self-realization no more rebirths and that is the liberation okay and you'll be in the higher state of consciousness and all these blah blah things but the main point is you will not have a rebirth next time whatever happened this time okay so <coughs> Kriya Yoga is the specific type of yoga which Yoga Nanda prescribes. Okay, so there are different types of yoga, and Yoga Nanda's prescription, okay, in his school of thought, is meditation based yoga. Okay, so meditation. As I said before, to reach the higher state of consciousness, which is that you are God. But when they say God, it's not the personal God of Christianity. You no know, one is giving. That's not a God who is telling to, uh, giving the Ten Commandments. Not that person, God. It's an impersonal God. In other words, whatever it is is God. You are also God, but you have to realize it through meditation. You calm down everything. When you, you know, reduce your, uh, uh, control your breath, reduce your heart rate, then you will realize that you are God. So in simple words, that's what he's trying to tell. Okay, so, so according to Yogananda, Kriya Yoga is the technique. So that's the word he used. It's a scientific technique. Okay, which is spiritual, through which you can obtain self-realization or liberation, which is nothing but understanding, becoming aware that you are that, as they say, you are that, tattva masi, or you are thou or that. It happened in you know a long time ago. One student was with the guru came and showed a seed and asked what is this and the teacher broke the seed and said what is there he said nothing he said you are that okay so you are whatever is in the seed you are the seed the seed is you you are the seed there is no distinction between that which is the nature and that which is in you that which is in the, which is the ultimate reality is the same. You and the seed are manifestations of the ultimate reality, which he calls, which they call in a Brahman. Okay, not God, it's English simplification. So Brahman is the right word for uh, the Hindu God, whereas the Theos is the word for the Greek word for Christian God as is Allah, the word for the Arabic word for uh, Islamic God, whereas both Allah and Theos are same in the sense Abrahamic personal God, God who spoke to Abraham, asked him to move from Iraq to, you know, 
Israel, I will make you a great nation. All these things he's speaking, promising, giving the land, and then telling that the Messiah will come, all those things. Okay, the sacrifice, asking you know Abraham to sacrifice his son, and then telling, you know, I will provide the lamb as the substitute, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. And so that is Theos, God of uh, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, his person. He will speak to you and he'll make sure you know he has spoken to you. He can do that. Okay, that's God. What normally we think. Whereas in Hinduism, that is not God. Okay, they're talking about impersonal that. Okay, they do not know what it is, but that is this. Okay, that is this and that is everything else. That is the manifest. Everything is the manifestation of that one that. Okay, so how can you know you are that? Okay, when you calm down everything, when you meditate, you will know. Okay. And you, when you know that you are that, you are attained the higher level of consciousness. Now you are thinking you are God. Higher level of consciousness and your bad karmas are over. Okay, our bad karmas are reduced because of your this pursuit in which you are involved. You are increasing your good karma tremendously and you stop your bad karmas and you know you're doing a lot of things to reduce them. You know, you are also increasing the good karma, also reducing the bad karma, and you know what is going to happen. There is not going to be any karmic debt. Okay. And what will happen if there is no karmic debt? There is no need to be reborn to suffer. Okay, there is no just reason to be reborn. So that is how Kriya Yoga works. Okay, it will help you to not have another rebirth. And that is liberation or salvation in yoga philosophy and in all Hinduism, okay? You don't have uh, different ways to obtain the same goal, okay? Different philosophies, different religious schools, different, uh, you know, uh, theological schools, all of them will show different way. And then finally they will tell, if you do all these things, your bad karma will reduce, good karma will increase, you will not have a rebirth. That is moksha, okay? You are dissolved into that which you are already okay so that's how they will speak and that is what they mean so that as you can see is no basis it's make-believe what is called it's make-believe because already it is stratified in India the system the people are stratified based on caste caste is stratified based on karma points and from the top, all these things are being given to the bottom guys to tell why they are in the various castes because of their bad karma in previous birth. That's what the priestly caste are going are telling the other caste, and that if they break caste, they'll be punished. Okay, there are severe punishments for breaking caste, caste intermarriage, and caste is segregation especially as it goes down, it becomes very cruel, but just, okay? Justly cruel punishment for bad karma of previous birth. And those are the workers. And they have to do their jobs, you know, manual labor, farmers, artisans, without expecting anything in this birth, okay? You're going to do your duty without expectation. So that is the meaning. You're going to do your caste duty, whatever caste you're born, there's a specific job you need to do. You have to just do it without expecting anything, without reward now. Maybe the next birth, you'll be born in a higher caste and you can have spiritual pursuits and you can progress into no rebirth state of self-realization. Okay, so that is why it's made up because it is not for everyone, as they are trying to tell now. It's a new phenomenon. The Hindus have started telling that uh, now everyone will know that this is caste based. Now let's tell it's for everyone. Okay, <laughs> so the new thing, and especially in the West, 
they want to hide this caste thing, uh, you know, even though they will tell it's all because of post karma. So they are embarrassed about it. They do not want to, you know, it's a very, very cruel thing. It's like a concentration camp, segregation, untouchability also in there totally and superbly covered it up. So whatever Hinduism is known for in India is not at all what Hinduism is known for in the West. Okay, so the PR is excellent. Okay, the sales are booming. And uh, as usual, the priests are now going as gurus. And even other caste guys are becoming, you know, gurus are given access to become gurus based on some anomalies, maybe their androgynous or something like that. Some appeal to divinity in Hinduism, which is considered divine, maybe androgynous person, a trans, all these are considered, you know, divine in some form. And uh, those guys can, you know, uh, bless the marriage couple, they, they can become the gurus, they will go here and there, you know, all these, that is what is happening. And they propagate the school of yoga and all those things. So this is total religion from India, but projected in a different way in the West. That equality, freedom, all those things are valued. Whereas for in India, they don't believe in freedom. They don't have the concept of freedom. They, talk only about duty and fate. Okay, so there are only two things. One is duty, another is fate. Fate is because of what you did in the previous birth. You are born, that's your fate. You suffer in that caste, you do the caste duty. Your fate is to do your caste duty and suffer. Whatever happens during this birth without any expectation, for reward now. Okay, so that is the duty. No reward based doing your fate. Okay, so with that, we come to a good understanding of what we are dealing with, and I will call this as spiritual deception. Okay, so this is total spiritual deception. See, everyone is free to follow what they want. Okay, but you should know <clears throat> what is what, that's all. If you like this, you know, go ahead. Okay, but if there is heaven and hell, like Bible says, then you'll be in, uh, you know, you know where. Okay, and I'll tell you what are the errors with this system of thinking also. And uh, this for Christians is spiritual deception. All this Kriya Yoga, all this Karma, all these, you know, multiple births, all these things. As Dr. Sarvapalli Radhakrishnan, who was the head of was the head of the Department of Philosophy at Oxford, and he was the first president of India, so he said the big difference, the big difference between Hinduism and Christianity is that in Christianity, as the Bible says, man is born once. It is appointed for man to die once, and then the judgment. There's a specific verse in the Bible. Man dies once and then the judgment. And that is the difference according to uh, even the Hindu philosopher of uh, India who was a president of India. So what I'm telling is these are very different systems and you need to know why this system is wrong, objectively wrong. And you need not worry about multiple births. You need not worry about karma. You need not worry about not having a rebirth because you're anyway not going to have a rebirth. Okay, so this is the only birth and you can be sure about it. Okay, so we have classified the errors and I have introduced the first big error, which is Kriya Yoga, because whatever you meditate, it doesn't matter. Okay, you cannot become what is not there. Okay, just because something happens in your brain, some alteration in brain waves because of you know you control your breathing for a long time, you are controlling your heart rate for a long time. Okay, brain waves are altered. 
you are de-stressed. That is not experiencing the ultimate reality place. That is changes in the chemicals in the brain. Okay, that is all. Reduction of cortisol. You know, all the experiences are based on chemicals released in the brain. And you cannot say inside, okay, look inside and that is ultimate reality. That is not ultimate reality. That is just an altered state of the brain. Okay, so that is the first error. It's conflating and confusing an altered state of brain because of this Kriya Yoga with self-realization with the impersonal divine. But since all those things do not exist because their claim is that this experience is how you know that exists. It is not just, but it's circular reasoning. Okay, so first they say it is there. You do it, then you will know it. Okay, but it is because you are already assuming it. Okay, you are going to think that whatever happens in your brain is same as experiencing ultimate reality or higher state of consciousness. And that is a logical error called circular reasoning. So, we come to the end of this episode and I have shared with you the first error. With Kriya Yoga, the main technique which is circular reasoning and factual error and a faulty assumption, assuming this brain state to be a self-realization. Thank you for joining and Jesus loves you. You can put your full faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you.